Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thank you for joining us for this important conversation on moving the regulatory cursor for digital regulation, jointly hosted by the ITU and the World Bank. And I'm very pleased to be able to facilitate this dialogue with my friend, Buthena. Welcome everyone, lovely to see you Doreen, and it's really great to have many regulators and experts with us today. Uh, uh, we look forward to a very good discussion this morning. I think today's conversation comes at a particularly critical juncture for the digital regulatory community, a time of great upheaval that has of course been exacerbated by the COVID crisis. The pandemic has served as a stress test for so many elements of our digital ecosystem. Back in March last year, as lockdowns began to be imposed around the world, we saw huge demand spikes that put enormous strain on operators' abilities to keep vital networks up and running. And of course, not long after, we saw the internet begin to be overwhelmed by an infodemic of misinformation that threatened to compromise public health efforts. Accompanying this was a surge in cyber criminality as unscrupulous players capitalized on people's fears to mount online attacks, perpetrate online scams and engage in misinformation campaigns. And most recently, we've seen the world's leading information and social platforms come, come under increasing scrutiny with new regulatory approaches targeting content moderation and content sourcing now being debated. These are tumultuous times where we have to remember that half the world is not connected. So Butena, tell us, how do you think the global digital regulatory community can best respond to these many diverse challenges? Thank you, Doreen. I, I really like how you put it. The pandemic was indeed a stress test to this digital ecosystem. Uh, for the regulatory community, it highlighted the importance of working together, uh, the importance of closer and deeper collaboration to address the regulatory challenges. And we know some of them are old challenges that need to be seen against an evolving technological and market conditions. Some are persistent challenges, some are new and emerging, but all of them are reshaping the perimeter of regulation. While recognizing the importance of specific context, a comprehensive approach to digital regulation is needed to tackle these complex challenges. I think the value of sharing latest knowledge and experience on regulatory issues cannot be stressed enough. It provides food for thought, it provides best practices and sometimes worst practices, practical solution that help mobilize the regulatory community uh, own uh, wisdom and collective intelligence to tackle the wide range of challenges. Uh, together with ITU, with your team, Doreen, we hope to facilitate this collective effort through uh, the recent publication of the digital handbook and platform uh, and uh, create information for discussions like the one we're having today. Uh, without a concerted effort, the, global, the globalization of digital uh, can carry in a fragmented manner uh, that would weaken uh, the whole regulatory environment and can deepen uh, existing vulnerability. So to avoid this scenario, uh, we, we need to step up, including uh, the private sector, the regulators, the operators, academia, civil society. And Doreen, I want to ask you, what role can international organizations like ours play uh, in helping regulators navigate these uncharted waters? It's a good question, and, and I really like your word together. Uh, our two organizations have a long history of cooperation around regulatory issues, including our speedboat connectivity work last year with WEF and, and of course with GSMA, uh, as well as a lot of our work together in the Broadband Commission, and I'm happy to see some of our commissioners joining us today. And I can only agree with you that, that maintaining close collaboration between conveners like ITU and the World Bank and the broader global community is gonna be crucial this year and beyond because the kind of regulatory fragmentation that you mentioned would be a real step backwards in our efforts to grow the sector and to promote broader digital inclusion. We really need to keep our eyes firmly on goals like harmonization, 
resource sharing, and collaborative multi-stakeholder frameworks that embrace transparent and globally agreed principles. Regulatory fragmentation adds complexity. It also adds cost to any effort to extend and to expand digital access. And with the COVID pandemic illustrating so dramatically the vital need for inclusive and better connectivity, we need to keep everyone working together constructively to help push access out to more people as affordably as possible. I think one problem that confronts us, of course, is, is how to help regulators build expertise when the pandemic is curtailing opportunities to meet and to exchange views. And I think the World Bank has been working on this issue. And Butena, maybe you can share with us a little bit more about that. Thanks, Doreen. Uh, in fact, the issue around the regulatory reform is a core component of our projects, and they are part of uh, the enabling environment component in almost every project where the bank is working with clients on this, uh, with a focus also on building capacity to support regulators in, in, in this uh, implement uh, the regulatory changes needed. Uh, we are emphasizing a lot also analytical work on regulatory issues and a lot of the uh, initiatives are joined with, with, uh, with ITU and with other partners uh, doing technical diagnostics uh, to identify regulatory gaps and supporting governments in addressing them. Uh, and we're also working to make sure that these resources are available uh, to everyone. And the, the example of the, the toolkit is, is a good one. We're working together to create dedicated e-learning courses based on this uh, uh, tool. Uh, one of the key elements that helped us uh, scale up these activities is also the support of partners who are supporting our efforts. Uh, a big shout today to the DDP, Digital Development Partnership uh, partners, and many of them are in the room today uh, with a big thank you because, you know, making these resources available is key uh, for us to work together on this uh, topic. Um, so this really, again, shows the power of partnership, uh, speaking of Global cooperation, Doreen. I'd like to hear from you about the upcoming uh, World Telecommunication Development Conference. How do you see this playing uh, with the issue around regulation uh, for the meeting next November? Great, thank you, Butena. So, of course, providing a global platform for frank exchange of ideas and experiences is one of the things that our organizations does well, together with with the World Bank. And of course, looking ahead to our World Telecommunications Development Conference that will take place in, in Addis Ababa in November, we're looking at a very much solutions focused conference where we intend to be tackling the challenges that are faced in connecting the unconnected. And of course, regulatory issues being one of those key challenges will feature, will feature prominently in the conference discussions. And when we look at solutions and the magnitude of the job to be done, 3.7 billion unconnected, partnerships will be key. We have a new component of the WTDC, which will be a full partnership segment with stakeholders coming forward with concrete commitments. We also have partnerships as a big focus in our Road to Addis series. And tomorrow we will be holding our second stop on the Road to Addis with a big focus on, on partnerships. Other conversations in our Road to Addis will be covering financing, innovation, and also for the first time youth with our GIGA Education Initiative with UNICEF and our Generation Connect program in the spotlight. And I do hope many of our colleagues online today will join us in, in this series in the run up to the WTBC. But for now, I think it's time to invite our distinguished panel of experts to weigh in on some of these key challenges that are facing the ICT regulatory community. And Butena, perhaps you could explain the format of our session today. Certainly. So today we'll have a session divided in two conversations of around 40 minutes each. Uh, the first one will be moderated by Doreen, and the second one I'll have the pleasure to moderate, uh, where we look at issues around uh, what would it take to support the regulators uh, in the new regulatory environment. 
Uh, both segments will kick off with a panel discussion, uh, followed by an open discussion where you are all encouraged to participate. And we we'll also uh, have the privilege of having uh, a number of authors of the regulatory handbook with us to kickstart the open discussion on each section when we get there. Uh, so to make sure we hear each other, as mentioned earlier, please make sure that you mute until uh, Doreen or myself uh, give you the floor and uh, raise your hand. If you have questions, start from now putting them on the on the chat box. Uh, so Doreen, over to you to get started for the first session. Uh, terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Butena. And as we get into the first conversation, I also wanted to mention that we're really happy that the digital regulation handbook that we've done together with the World Bank will be available in all six UN languages. And we're looking to, to March uh, next month where it will be available in all languages and you can download it for free from the internet. Uh, and I do hope you take advantage of that comprehensive resource. So before we get into our panel, I have been asked to invite you all to turn on your cameras. We're gonna try to do a group photo as we do in these sessions. So please turn on your camera. And Walid or Celia, are you going to help us understand when we're good to go for the photo? Let, let me count uh, until three <laughs> for okay, the best three. smile. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. OK, great. We're good I to go. The I took the best picture. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I'm sure it's the best picture. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the experiences of the past 12 months have emphasized the need to work proactively and the need to work rapidly, like a speedboat, to move the regulatory cursor in the direction of safer, more secure, and more inclusive digital transformation for all. Our distinguished panelists have much to share with us regarding their experiences in their own markets and their perspectives on the most urgent issues that need to be addressed. And as interactivity is an integral part of this event, I would uh, like to just repeat and stress what Buthena mentioned. Please start already now putting your questions and comments into the chat. So let me warmly welcome our speakers. We're very happy to have with us this afternoon or this morning. Uh, we have Pamela Hide Macias, the Undersecretary of Telecommunications Subtel in Chile. We have Dr. Mohamed Altamimi, who is the Governor of the Communications and Information Technology Commission, CITC, from Saudi Arabia. We have Mr. Dan Schlubloom, who is the Director General of the Swedish Post and Telecommunications Authority. We have Ms. Mr. Balcha Reba, the Director General of the Ethiopian Communications Authority. I think he was having trouble connecting, so I hope he does join us. And we have Mr. Ahmad Binder, who is the Assistant Vice President, Group Regulatory Affairs at Axiata Group. So to shape our conversation, I would like our discussants to consider the following questions. Do the basics of ICT regulation still apply? In this context, what regulatory measures are needed to nurture socioeconomic growth? Is there need for market redefinition in the digital economic space? And what long-term impact will the pandemic crisis have on collaborative practices across the board? I would like to invite each of you to share your thoughts, three minutes, four max. We do have a timer, Celia will be helping me with that. And if you really run over, I will have to hold up the unfortunate red card. Uh, so let me turn to our first speaker, uh, Undersecretary Pamela. Uh, we have uh, seen the internet transforming societies. We still have a big digital divide, but it is starting to reduce. Undersecretary, please share with us your views on what you see. Over to you, please. Pamela, you're, you're muted. Of course. A hi to everyone, everyone and, and thanks for the invitation. Definitely this year, we saw a digital transformation. In one year, what it usually will be done in four or five years. And in that sense, obviously, regulation is being back, laid back behind. And um, we have been working in Chile 
with all the sectors, with the Congress, of course, and all the other ministries to speed up the process to match up the, the reality with, of uh, digital transformation with the regulation. In Chile, it's very important to strengthen our country to promote the evolution of digital technology, technologies. In the case of Chile, this has been announced by pillars. For example, we have been reinforcing technological neutrality, free competition, and open market for innovation. Together, we're working with all the ministers that has to do something with transformation, uh, with our that responsibility in Chile is in different ministry. It's very important. To, it's very important to consolidate telecommunications industry. If the present is the future, and it's especially important to connect the unconnected, but also to get out fast and the fastest enough of this economic crisis. It is very relevant in that sense. For example, to highlight the, all the path that Chile has been carrying out to develop 5G in Chile with the commitment of, we are committed to be the pioneers in Latin America to achieve that. Not only we have been obviously having four tender process after seven years that we have been no other tender process for a spectrum, but it has been very important also to work with all the, in, the ecosystem of technology as well as telecommunications. And by that mean, obviously, regulators, academics, entrepreneurs, centers of innovation, international institutions, banks, into uh, World Bank, or everyone that can help us uh, go in the right path. And of course, look at the countries that have been implementing this for some years already. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that and for sharing what's happening in Chile and the way that you're advancing the closing of the digital divide and linking that to, to the economic recovery. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Altamimi, let's turn to you. The mandate of regulators has evolved to reflect a changing global regulatory and technology landscape. Can you tell us more on the regulatory transformation that you see is needed and the process that you're undergoing on CITC. Dr. Altamimi, over to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Doreen and uh, Poseina, for inviting uh, me to this uh, conversation. And hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be participated in, in such an event, which comes in a perfect time to ensure a sustainable digital future for everyone. I, I will build in, in, in your conversation earlier at the beginning. Yes, we are really left at a complex digital ecosystem. And this complexity does not affect only the investor and the player in the market. It will keep majority of ICT regula regulator, including me, myself, busy over the coming years. So answering your questions, uh, uh, Doreen, is there a list of predefined regulatory measures to mitigate this complexity? I think we are not there yet. We don't have a predefined regulatory measures to mitigate all the risk, all the risk of uh, digital uh, ecosystem. And what I would like to, to share with you uh, this evening, to share with you my concern and my uh, line of thinking to mitigate this risk. I will not say solutions because we are not yet there. So we are, as a regulator, we started to reconsider our definition of traditional market. Usually we build our regulatory framework based on predefined market or market segmentation. So we are right now trying to transition ourselves as an as a ICT regulator to be a digital regulator. We think it's a must to start enhancing collaboration, both between regulatory bodies and also between internationally across border. So if I may share three points that we are discussing right now within Saudi Arabia about how to mitigate this risk, how to enhance and get the best out of this digital ecosystem and remove this complexity. One of them is overarching regulatory framework. There is a trade-off between regulatory certainty and flexibility. Traditional investors, they are asking us to have to be more certain 
for them to re remove or reduce the risk of investment. At the same side, the other investor, the new investor, digital platform, also the consumer, they want us to be more agile. They want more agility in our uh, like regulations and regulatory framework. And that's add a complexity for us as a regulator. How to protect and balance between protecting consumer and promote innovations and competition. We start to think about something like sandbox. We have a sandbox for uh, FinTech, for example, in Saudi Arabia. We have a, a sandbox for delivery app in Saudi Arabia. That could help in the, in the short term, but in the long term, we have to have this kind of an arching regulatory framework that will be based on uh, a digital, fully digitized uh, regulatory uh, uh, a platform, if I could say. The second point, which is I mentioned at the beginning, the collaboration, the collaborative uh, mode between regulator. We, be, we believe there is, should be a mechanism that help regulator, regulatory body to work together. Not only regulators, only regulator and the private sector. And here I'm not saying for more regulations, but better regulation and better outcome uh, for end users. So to this end, in Saudi Arabia, we have adopted a new uh, take on regulatory collaborations. We have been lately established a national regulatory committee that will bring together eight core regulators to collaborate in ICT and digital cross-sectorial topics, such as artificial intelligence, blockchains, smart cities, fintech, and digital platform. We starting uh, by the end of last year, 2020, and we are planning to cover multiple topics. The, one of the outcomes out of this national regulatory uh, committee probably a couple of sandbox to uh, enhance the investor to enter this market. The third point, which is, I think uh, it's a common across uh, both uh, regulatory and investor is building capacity or investing in more regulatory skills development. We believe there is a lack globally, both in industry, also in regulatory for the skills to adopt, to change the regulator body from traditional one to digital uh, regulator. So what we are thinking here in Saudi Arabia, we are planning to establish a digital regulatory academy with the aim of building the skills and capability of relevant stakeholders, including regulatory authority within Saudi Arabia and private sector in partnership with the ITU, World Bank and leading regulatory and policy uh, institute. So uh, I would like to thank you, the, the, the ITU and the World Bank for the digital regulatory handbook. And for me, if I might share a little story, for me, when I read this book last year, I make it mandatory for anyone joining us in CITC, the telecom regulatory, to be part of the import process to read this book. It's absolutely fantastic book that will give like a quick start for anyone entering the regulatory as a part of uh, like building the skills within uh, the CITC. Thank you very much for, for this uh, event and organizing such a great event and looking forward to our discussion. Thank you so much, Dr. Altamimi. That's what we like to hear. We like to hear that, uh, that these efforts are actually useful and that they're taken on board by those that we're, we're, we're seeking to deliver to. So I'm glad you, you find it so useful. You covered a lot of ground that we'll take up uh, when, when we hear from some of the authors. Uh, from the complexities, the, the, the need for certainty, flexibility, agility, the sandbox approach, and, and we, we see the handbook as a sort of sandbox, the need for collaboration. And I think that's this, the perfect segue to my next uh, speaker, and that's Dan Schlubloom, who was our, our chair of the Global Symposium for Regulators last year. Uh, and Dan, you led the consultation on the gold standard for digital regulation. And of course, as part of that exercise, you were really emphasizing the need for collaboration, holistic, cross-sectoral, multinational regulatory and policy approaches. So Dan, in, in your view, and perhaps you can also pick up on some of Dr. Altamimi's points, are regulatory institutions fit for purpose to address the evolution of digital technologies and market needs? Over to you, Dan. Thank you very much, Doreen. Uh, yes, I will happily pick that up. And thanks again for the opportunity last year of sharing the GSR, which I found uh, very useful. Uh, and all of these events, I completely agree with my colleague from, from Saudi Arabia, are 
very useful to all of us uh, to have open and frank discussions about uh, what we see as, as developments of, of our sector and as our roles is, is indeed very important. And I will, again, of course, underline, I think every time when we talk about uh, are we fit for purpose or not, it really, you need to start thinking about where, where are we heading uh, as regulators if we're looking at our traditional task of ensuring uh, of competition in, in the deregulated the ICT markets. Uh, that is a skill that I think is, is relatively, uh, we, we know how to deal with that. And I think we've come a long way in, in many of our roles. But as we are getting deeper and deeper into uh, the digitization of entire societies, there's almost nothing in our daily lives and in our societies that are not getting digitized. Uh, the, the challenge is becoming a completely different one. So I think the answer can be both yes and no. I think we are fit for purpose to do many things that we have done for a long time and that we know well. But in terms of get, getting into the new challenges, uh, because digitization is not stopping whatever we or policymakers uh, feel about it it's it's happening and we need to be there to to ensure that it provides good for society and for all users that it's inclusive and that it doesn't create new digital divides that those divides are not deepened both within societies and between societies this is uh, i think the most important key uh, and how we choose to set that up uh, in in national uh, situations or regional, even global, I think that can happen in so many different ways. But all of them depend heavily, in my view, on on collaboration. That that we are actually as as individuals and organizations uh, really. Uh, uh, taught and followed up and steered into this deep level collaboration that actually means something that, that we don't only talk about what is my task, what is your task, but how can we together perform tasks that are meaningful to, to both our roles and to our societies? Uh, because it doesn't really matter what kind of organization you have, none of us will cover all the aspects of, uh, of society that needs to be covered uh, as we continue to deepen this uh, this uh, integration of uh, of traditional uh, uh, ways of doing into the new ways of doing things, uh, and that there are so many good things that will come about it. So we 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 should not think of digitization as a threat. We should think of it as absolutely opportunities but they need to be inclusive and they need to be fair uh, on a global, uh, regional and national scale. And that's, uh, I think, the most important message I can share at this time. Thanks. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for, for keeping the time as well. Um, absolutely, digitization being an opportunity, the importance of, of, of in, being inclusive and fair um, and as you said, good for society and the importance of meaningfulness and, and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, I want to see if Balcha Reba, our Ethiopian regulator, he connected and I think he got disconnected. Balcha, if you're there, can you turn your camera on? And please, we wanted to hear from you on the digital transformation with Digital Ethiopia. Balcha, are you with us? Yes, Ms. Dorian. Hello, welcome, welcome. We know so much is happening on the digital agenda in Ethiopia. Can you share with us how you see your role in driving market development and the challenges you foresee, please? Over to you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Dorian. Uh, Dorian. Uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Votina uh, and uh, distinguished speakers and uh, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank um, both ITU and the World Bank Group uh, for organizing this conversation on uh, digital regulation under the team uh, moving the regulatory cursor for uh, digital regulation and inviting me to speak about my experiences uh, of um, uh, regulatory activities uh, here in uh, Ethiopia. 
Um, uh, as you may know, uh, the uh, Ethiopia uh, is undertaking a major um, reform, especially in um, telecommunication uh, uh, sector, uh, considering the broader context and the uh, impact of the telecom sector, the Ethiopian government uh, with the objective to sustain the country's uh, growth and attract foreign and domestic investment. Uh, aims further to develop the telecom sector in order for the sector to be able to offer uh, modern and high quality services uh, at prices that is uh, globally uh, competitive. Uh, uh, telecom is um, a key instrument to achieve uh, the national ICT vision and objective uh, through the expansion of ICT uh, telecommunications uh, and other infrastructure and services uh, based on the fundamental uh, principles uh, of universal access and equitable uh, distribution. Uh, hence, in, li in line with this uh, vision and objective of uh, the ICT policy uh, and the strategy of the uh, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the government has initiated a reform to transform uh, the telecommunication uh, sector. Uh, the telecommunication sector reform has uh, two major uh, objectives. Uh, one is to transform the incumbent operator, uh, which is Ethio Telecom, uh, through strengthening of uh, the participation of uh, the private sector. And the second uh, is um, uh, to restructure the telecom market uh, itself. Uh, to govern the transformation activity, a, a policy option paper was developed covering four broad um, areas. Uh, one was uh, introduction of independent regulation uh, of the sector to ensure that the interests of consumers, investors, and the governments are properly uh, represented and balanced. And the other uh, area was restructuring of ETO Telecom in response to the uh, reformed uh, market. The third one is to privatize uh, parts of uh, the ETO Telecom, uh, that is partial privatization of uh, uh, ETO Telecom uh, and the major in the force uh, and a very important aspect uh, uh, of the time is uh, reform the Ethiopian telecom market structure uh, with emphasis on introduction of um, uh, competition. Uh, accordingly, um, uh, to liberalize the sector, you know, uh, first uh, the sector uh, regulatory law as well as the sector regulator has to be um, established. Uh, accordingly, uh, the new law is enacted, which is the Communication Service Proclamation uh, uh, number 1148, 2019. Uh, and in, uh, using by this um, uh, uh, proclamation, the Ethiopian Communication Authority is um, uh, established. Uh, after its establishment, the first task of ECA uh, was you know, developing new telecommunications regulatory framework. Uh, and also the framework is followed by development of uh, several directives which would be used for the uh, sector uh, uh, regulation. The reform activity is uh, well underway and now we are undertaking you know, the RFP process uh, for uh, two new operator licenses which we will be uh, issuing in April um, uh, this year. In doing you know, this reform activity, we are uh, very much uh, grateful to the support we have received from the World Bank Group uh, and, and uh, especially uh, with our transaction advisor, the uh, IFSC. Uh, they were you know, providing us all necessary supporters uh, and uh, they were with us you know, with a two years journey we have made uh, since uh, 2018. Uh, as earlier speakers, you know, uh, the challenges uh, I am uh, witnessing this time is, uh, you know, especially uh, in the lack of the convergence in uh, regulation. Uh, as you know, uh, as we all know, you know, uh, in uh, previous time, uh, the telecom sector, uh, even the ICT itself, as well as the, the postal sector was uh, regulated uh, independently. Uh, still in our country, uh, we are undertaking uh, only telecom and the postal sector is regulated uh, under the same uh, regulatory regime. Uh, the broadcasting is uh, a separate um, uh, and it is considered uh, in its, uh, or handled by a separate regulator, which is the Ethiopian Broadcasting uh, Authority. Uh, so now when we see, you know, especially with the advent of the e-commerce, the digital financial service, uh, and also uh, with the big data 
uh, and really, you know, we, we have to think of uh, uh, to focus uh, in a converged way uh, on a digital um, uh, regulation. Uh, in Ethiopia, of course, you know, uh, we are now, uh, we have a new digital strategy uh, uh, it, it, and we have, uh, you know, our uh, plan is, you know, just as much as possible, you know, uh, to embark on a converged uh, regulatory uh, in environment. So uh, this, you know, uh, the lack of the convergence uh, in regulation is really the major uh, challenge. Uh, even now, while we are talking about the big data and the data regulation, in many nations, you know, uh, we are witnessing that, you know, for example, the data protection is separately considered under the data protection uh, commissions. Uh, and also many countries are also, you know, institutionalizing, you know, such kind of approach for the data regulation. Uh, but this, I don't think, you know, this lack of convergence uh, uh, will be taking us, you know, uh, to the better uh, result. Uh, I think, you know, ITU in collaboration with World Bank Group came out in a very important and a timely moment, moment to introduce this uh, digital uh, regulation, which is a very comprehensive and a cross-sectoral regulatory guide. Uh, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you so much, Bansha. You've, you've laid out um, the, the whole process that you're undergoing in, in, in Ethiopia, quite a big, uh, big agenda in addition to hosting the WTBC, of course, setting up a new regulator, private sector participation in the operator, paving the way for competition, uh, many exciting things happening. Thank you for sharing those developments. And some of the points you mentioned about privacy and data protection, I see them also coming through in the chat and we will pick up on those points in the, in the second part of our discussion today. Thank you, thank you so much, Valcha. Now we're gonna turn, ladies and gentlemen, for a, a view from the private sector. So we have Ahmed Binder with us, uh, one of the leading uh, telecommunications groups in Asia uh, with a goal to becoming a digital champion. What are the main regulatory hurdles, Ahmed, that, that you face and what are the regulatory measures that are needed to address the complexity of the digital ecosystem. If you can jump in, uh, Ahmed, thank and you. three, thank four minutes max, thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Doreen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, ITU and the World Bank very much for giving me an opportunity to share my views in presence of such esteemed speakers and a wonderful audience. Uh, well, the digital regulation toolkit and the platform were much awaited. It was absolutely a step in the right direction and it will enable exchange of learning and would stimulate discussion on modernization of regulatory frameworks across the world as we one of the examples that we see right now. I represent as the other group, as you introduced, uh, we run um, uh, headquartered in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we run multiple infrastructure, mobile and digital businesses across 11 countries in South Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, we directly or indirectly support more than 600,000 jobs in Asia. Uh, well, uh, we all know that in the new normal, the, the power of digital technologies has come into sharp focus. Digitization or enabling a digital economy has significantly been promoted in many government agendas. Uh, we also know that connectivity is a core enabler of the digitization. We are the connectivity providers, by the way. And hence, dependence of many sectors, industries, and masses on connectivity has increased many fold. The demand of mobile broadband has increased between 20 to 30% during the pandemic. Um, expectations on us have risen significantly, and this has put connectivity providers under enormous pressure. To top this up, the duration of technical, uh, the technology investment uh, for mobile operators, for example, the time from 2G to 3G to 4G and now uh, to 5G has rapidly shrunk. Uh, and 5G will require massive network um, uh, densification and hence much more capex would be needed. So far, we've done a decent job in ensuring connectivity during pandemic. Uh, I hope that the world agrees with this. Uh, however, significant investment will be required to keep up with this demand. It is therefore necessary to create a virtuous investment cycle uh, to keep the engine running. Uh, we believe that the governments and regulators have a huge role in enabling this cycle. And we see this more and more um, in these forums, uh, the seriousness of this. For example, there's a need to develop national digital infrastructure and connectivity roadmaps uh, to rationalize the sector specific taxes uh, for connectivity providers, uh, bring the spectrum fees to, a, to the reasonable levels, uh, consider competition uh, from across the borders while defining markets and assessing market powers uh, and streamlining fragmented industry structures as you have uh, earlier mentioned. 
etc. So I'm very happy to see that the new regulation toolkit brings attention to many of these issues. On the flip side, uh, who has gained more, most out of this wave of digitization, which is supported by the connectivity providers? Well, the big tech companies um, have gotten even bigger. Uh, more, uh, just five of them have uh, added a whopping $2.7 trillion to their market caps in just 2020 in one year. Um, uh, so in the past few years, we have seen some global source searching in checking the super dominance of these digital tech giants. And this is gradually resulting in the reboot of antitrust regulations. We see uh, the proposed DSA DMA in the EU. We see the media code in Australia, US anti antitrust proceedings. Uh, we see the revised competition uh, uh, law in Germany and the digital markets unit in UK. Um, so there has been some attention to it. So while one of the core objectives of regulating the ICT regulation is consumer protection, and it is and it will always be relevant, um, they're, they're, its interpretation might need some updating. For example, are free services really free? Are they actually beneficial to consumers in the longer run, uh, in the longer run or these services are limiting their choices? What's the price they pay? What's the value of data to the consumers? All these questions are being asked. To sum it up, regulation in the digital world is complex. This is because of the interplay between many issues related to digital platforms. For example, competition, data security, consumer protection, and so on. We're happy to see steps in the right direction. We believe that there's a need for all the regional bodies and NRAs to look into modernizing their regulatory tools to respond to the changed world. Many regulations can be relaxed for the connectivity providers while others could be put, uh, proposed for the digital ones. And with this, I thank you very much. I hope I have not exceeded my time. Thank you. Excellent, so much. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, and as you said, regulation in the digital world is complex and you have certainly highlighted a number of those complexities from taxation, spectrum fees, uh, consumer protection, competition, and of course the importance of investments. I'm glad you, you raised that issue as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a number of questions that have come in in, in the chat on a range of, of, of issues. So I'm happy to, uh, to see that. Uh, we're gonna hear from one of our authors. Uh, we have Janet Hernandez with us. Janet is the president of the telecommunications management group. She focuses on ICT policy and regulation. Janet, you provided um, extensive support. You have provided extensive support to countries in reforming their policies and regulatory frameworks. In the parts of the handbook that you focused on, and I understand you, of course, you were the author uh, of the regulatory governance and, and access for all pieces. Um, can you share with us are existing ICT regulatory authorities equipped to address these new digital regulatory issues? Do you see regu regulators' roles shifting? Uh, and should countries create new regulators specialized in digital platforms and services? Or should the roles of existing regulators be expanded? So over to you, Janet. If, um, if I can ask you to be kind of two minutes, that would be great. Over sure. to you. Thank you, Thank you Doreen. Um, I think... Uh, the the presentations by by a number of the regulators have uh, been very uh, to the point and on this on this issue. Um, and Dr. Altamini, clearly you have read and embraced the the toolkit, uh, the handbook. So uh, kudos to you. But I think it, as mentioned, the the regulators' role is definitely shifting. Um, we're seeing that digital services is bringing a whole host of issues that regulators did not anticipate. Um, and so I think governments are looking at how do we address these issues? And we're seeing a variety of different approaches being taken. Um, the current regulators of ICT and broadcasting um, sometimes do not have uh, the mandate to address some of these issues. And so the regulators are having to potentially shift that mandate. You saw this in, in the UK where Ofcom looked at the issue of whether to establish a new regulator and what they opted to do was to um, expand the mandate of the regulator to address um, illegal or harmful content. Uh, likewise, you saw in Australia, they looked at the issue of whether to create a separate digital regulator. And instead what they did was they decided that with the issue of digital platform competition, that would be addressed by the competition authority. And then you would have the uh, media and communications authority dealing with certain issues. So there was a clear de designation of, of authority. Um, but I think you're also, uh, as I think has been raised, realistically, 
it's very difficult to have one regulator deal with all of these issues. And so that brings in the issue of collaboration, which I think we talk a lot about in the handbook and it has been raised today. Um, you see this being done formally um, through different agreements and MOUs. Um, Saudi Arabia clearly has, has embraced this by their committee. And I think also with regards to um, the UK, they have um, created a joint digital regulation forum that has competition, the competition authority, the, data, um, the information commissioner, and also the with Ofcom. So you see this increasing. Um, and I think that's not gonna go away. It's, I think it's a realistic way to deal with these issues. And I think also industry has a, a strong role to play as has been mentioned, because I think they can bring in their insights um, and there's opportunity to address some of these issues through self-regulation and through co-regulation, such as codes of conduct, which I think have been embraced by a number of jurisdictions. So the bottom line is, it's as has been mentioned, I think it's a little early, but I think you are seeing different approaches and really different markets uh, are, are gonna have to address it different ways because they have different resource needs and different expertise. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Different approaches, different markets, and, and, and certainly great to be able to have these kinds of fora to, to share experiences and, um, and learnings. Thank you for that. Now we're going to hear from David, uh, David Rogerson. So David is the director of Insight Consulting. He's a leading expert on uh, economics, uh, working on telecom regulation and, and policy in developing markets. Uh, David, you led the piece on competition and economics of the of the handbook, and we've seen some related uh, questions on this issue as well in the chat. David, is regulatory leapfrog possible? Can you jump straight into digital regulation? Share with us briefly, two minutes if you can, your thoughts, David. Uh, great question, uh, Doreen. Thank you. Uh, it's a different way of expressing the, the question we had earlier, do the basics of ICT regulations still apply and uh, I suppose actually it was quite interesting watching that video at the beginning and thinking back 20 years and when we first looking at te telecoms regulatory handbook and the principles that were talked about there were very much the same that we were hearing about from Ethiopia in the current moment and uh, I think it's true to say that, uh, that, that the basics remain fundamental and, and need to be done well and unfortunately as we heard from Dan Schoblum from Sweden, that uh, we have to add to that a great deal more in order to cope with digital regulation effectively. Um, and those that, that's a twin challenge. We've got to, we've got to keep what we're doing, uh, do it better, uh, provide more certainty as well as flexibility, provide the investment environment that we, 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 we heard about from the requested from the private sector and at the same time collaborate to address the, the, the emerging challenges of, of digital regulation. I, I particularly like and commend the, the questions and comments in the chat from uh, Emmanuel Giovanetti, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, um, about the developing of new, new approaches to markets. You know, in, in, in Europe 20 years ago, we had 18 markets. Now we've only got two that are being analyzed and, and, and regulated. Uh, but there's a whole lot of other um, markets that we need to consider, not just within countries, but internationally because of the, the growth of, of digital applications and, and platforms. And as, as already been said, it's not, we can't use exactly the same structures because the value in these digital markets is often not in dollar terms, it's in uh, user content uh, and uh, the, the, the the sharing of data about, about consumers. So we need new methodologies uh, as well. So it's not a case of uh, total leapfrog. We can do a bit of leapfrog, but uh, we need to do the basics and do it well, as well as adding on uh, new forms of regulation as described in the handbook. Okay, excellent. So we can't just leapfrog. We, gotta, we still need to understand the basics and, and do that well. Uh, but we do need new methodologies. And of course, you've stressed as well the importance of collaboration. Thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from our amazing speakers and our incredible authors on 
different experiences on the tools and the measures needed to navigate the complexity of the digital transformation process. Now we're gonna shift over to part two. I'm gonna hand back to Butena and we're gonna look at how does this all fit in when we address uh, bringing into market disruptive technologies. Um, keep sending your questions in and commenting in the chat and I hand over to you, Butena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doreen. Uh, the first conversation was very insightful and I wouldn't have hoped for a better way to start a new month and uh, a new week uh, better than the discussion this morning, really insightful. So one could say that catching up with the fast moving technology and industry dynamics make the job of the regulators one of the most exciting jobs of our days. Uh, definitely not a boring one. And uh, it's uh, amazing uh, all the insights we heard on, on the first part. So let us continue this conversation on the evolving regulatory environment by spending a little bit more time on the current and future regulatory implications related to disruptive technology, technological development. And many questions come to mind. One, uh, how can uh, new technologies better inform the regulatory decision making process of regulators? How can regulatory definitions, tools, levers adopt to innovation, uh, innovative data-driven business models? Uh, how do we balance the need to foster innovation with the demands for consumer protections and safeguards? Uh, how do we collaborate at the national, regional, and global level on the new regulatory issues around uh, new technologies and data-driven development? Uh, as you see, are emerging around data-driven development, uh, digital platforms, uh, around latest generation of connectivity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, I'm sure many of you around this virtual table today are dealing with these issues on a daily basis. So we're going to start, we're going to have the same approach as the first panel. We'll start with a discussion uh, with our distinguished panelists, and then we'll invite two authors uh, from uh, the, the, the handbook uh, to share with us their insights and uh, take questions uh, at the end. Uh, to get started, let me warmly welcome our speakers for this segment, uh, Ms. Mercy Wonjo, uh, Acting Director General of the Communication Authority of Kenya, uh, Mr. Constantinos uh, Masilos, uh, President of the Telecommunication and Postal uh, Commission, uh, EETT of Greece, uh, Mr. Omar Mansour Ansari, Chairman of the Telecommunication Regulatory Authority of Afghanistan, Mr. Mario Formo, uh, Commissioner at the Federal Telecommunication Institute of Mexico. Uh, and then from the voice of the industry, uh, Ms. Jennifer Manor, Vice President of Regulatory Affairs of ECOSTAR, which provides global uh, solutions of satellite communications. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Mercy. And you know, one of the most important aspects of regulation in every sector is around the idea of how do we strike balances? Uh, how do we strike balances between competing approaches and priority? At the end of the day, it is a balancing act. So in our days of this very rapid technological development, this balancing act gets a deeper meaning if we think about multiple dimension a regulator needs to take uh, in mind. Consumer protection, citizen protection, flexibility and incentives for business innovation, need for efficiency on the supply side and trust on the demand side, etc. So would love to hear from you uh, uh, that you share your views on this balancing act and whether and how the regulatory tools of today can address some of the tensions and strike the right balances. Over to you, Mercy. Thank you very much, uh, Buthina. It's really a pleasure to appear here because when I watched the video at the beginning, it really was a throwback moment because I did attend the launch of the first handbook um, in Geneva about 20 years ago. So this was uh, really uh, such a testament of movement uh, of time. But even 20 years ago, regulation was never meant to be easy. And even then it was still a balancing act, a consideration between commercial interests and the public good and the consumer welfare at the end of the day. Uh, moving fast forward to this time of a pandemic, I think it only took things to a whole new level of complexity, whereby, 
you find that uh, we had old models that seems to work quite fine, but now there has been a lot of redefinition that is happening. And I find that uh, to a large extent, there has been uh, a lot of need for speed, having to make decisions that took a longer time over a short period, which leads to a situation where the capacity building is about learning and learning and relearning because also the considerations are changing. 20 years ago, it was really about opening up the market for business and for competition. But over the years, the role of technology has been recognized and appreciated that digital transformation is not just about business. Digital transformation is also about service delivery to the citizen is also a huge contributor to economic development. So that even as we open up our markets, depending on the regulatory tools and the licenses that we bring up, the balancing act redefines itself because it then becomes what is the greatest good in terms of impact? Is it about the costing for the licenses or is it about the impact that uh, these licensees will deliver um, into the market. This has been a real change and a real balancing act. Secondly, with digital transformation, assets that we all carried around like data have now assumed a new value. But is the consumer really aware of this kind of uh, redefinition of value. And this then becomes a whole new amplified role for a regulator in terms of capacity building and awareness creation for the consumers. So I would say that even going forward for regulators, the balancing act only got more complex and the requirement for decision-making uh, to be faster has only escalated. And therefore to appreciate these kind of forums where you sit and you benefit from the wisdom and experience of others. So I do really appreciate this forum hosted by the World Bank and the ITU for making this possible because it is through these kind of forums that we are then able to conduct our work as effectively as we can in the circumstances. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mercy. Thank you for for um, for for your views and for highlighting that the balancing act these days is getting even more complex highlighting the importance of data and the question you know how much people know the importance of this data and the role of the regulator to adapt thank you so much so my next question is uh, to um, costas masilos uh, I want us to focus on the new normal we are experiencing and ask you about lessons learned from your experience uh, and what are the collaborative approaches needed to support digital development. Over to you. Thank you, Buteina. Good afternoon. I'm really pleased to join you today online and let me start by uh, conveying my thanks to the organizers in ITU and World Bank for inviting me as a speaker in this great event. First of all, I would like to stress that the role of regulators, in my opinion, is to promote with every means available the innovation process brought by the digital technologies, which are the driving force in bringing the digital development. The collaborative approach, or more specifically, the collaborative regulation supports the innovation, investment, socioeconomic growth and digital development in a different way for each one of them and to a different extent. In the case of investments, the supporting impact, I believe, is obvious and can even be quantified as an example in telecommunications. In the case of mobile network infrastructure, we can mention the sharing investment agreements. Consequently, since the other three elements, innovation, socioeconomic growth and the digital development are highly dependent economically on the size and type of investment outcomes, the benefits stemming from the investments can be reflected to them, even with a multiplier effect. The collaborative approach represents a crucial driver for the socioeconomic development, while by facilitating the penetration of digital technologies will create new markets, will offer new types of employment, will contribute to the innovation process for the benefits of the consumers and the business. Also, the collaborative approach will offer additional benefits to the business sector by harmonizing rules and by ensuring a consistent implementation of policies and of regulatory frameworks that have evolved independently in many sectors over the years. 
the collaborative approaches are broadening out the regulatory frameworks beyond the narrow ICT sector to embrace and underpin all sectors of the digital economy. Regarding the lessons learned during the last year concerning the digital responses to COVID-19 pandemic, I consider that the digital technologies are playing a catalytic and direct role in efforts to manage our lives even in an environment with minimum economic activities and trying to find some ways to contain the pandemic. In particular, AI and associated technologies such as machine learning are finding innovative applications to a wide array of COVID-19 driven challenges. Still, the collaborative approach took a special meaning during this pandemic and proves its, its importance in dealing with COVID-19. The crisis has also illustrated the capacity of regulators for agile, adaptive and innovative action and lessons can be drawn for flexible and responsive, responsive regulation for the post-crisis period. In the short term, regulators led and took part in a suite of short term emergency measures during the COVID-19 crisis. And these have targeted immediate threats to the operation of markets and have addressed issues such as continuity of service, the increase in vulnerable customers and the financial security of operators. In the longer term, the transparent monitoring and phasing out of emergency measures will be important to maintaining predictability of state action in the economy. The rapid implementation of a wide range of measures following a collaborative approach has been a stress test for evidence-based, outcome-based, incentive-based, holistic decision-making. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is, this is really good and very nice to see the collaborative approaches really helping uh, in the context of the COVID and also after that, as we think about uh, building a resilient recovery, the importance of thinking outside of the box, the importance of all the principles that you put uh, on the table, adaptability, agility. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I'd like to go now to uh, Mr. Omar uh, Mansour Ansari. Uh, as we live, as we dive into the new regulatory priorities linked to disruptive technologies and new topics linked to new frontiers, we also should uh, not lose sight that in many cases this goes hand in hand uh, and in parallel with more traditional agendas uh, around coverage, around access, uh, and in most cases, uh, regulators on a daily basis have to deal with these two issues in parallel. So Mr. Uh, Omar, I'd like to invite you to share with us uh, Afghanistan experience on regulatory measures. Uh, what can regulators do? What are you doing to expand the coverage, the quality and adoption of ICT services in Afghanistan? And how can disruptive technologies play a role uh, in the approach you're taking? Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Botina, and great session, Doreen. I really enjoyed the conversation, and congratulations for the for, um, uh, session. Um, at the time of uh, the digital uh, revolution uh, and digital transformation, uh, Botina, we are facing a number of challenges as regulators. Uh, these include speed. Uh, regulatory enforcement and challenges related to institutional and boundary um, issues. Um, speed, when I say uh, technologies uh, are, are moving uh, in, in uh, being developed in a very, uh, very fast manner, uh, while the regulators are most of the time not ready uh, to, to uh, not only understanding the new technologies, but also um, uh, 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 kind of adjusting the regulatory, um, you know, procedures uh, and the regulations to address, you know, the potential challenges and also ensure that there is a competitive market um, in, in that uh, it's, it's successful and it's in the benefit of the consumer. An approach that we're taking here in Afghanistan, um, that's a whole of the government approach. We believe in coordination and we have been um, uh, discussing and, and coordinating with many uh, government institutions because uh, we understand that many items are related to many different organizations. So a collaborative approach 
a whole of the government is needed for us to be successful in, uh, in the future regulation. Also, uh, stakeholder engagement. Uh, we are placed in a very difficult, uh, you know, position. As a regulator, we work, for, we, we, we are bound to ensure the rights of the, the consumer in also um, helping the investors to, uh, to, uh, to make their businesses profitable or their ventures profitable, and also helping the government, um, uh, you know, uh, have their revenues um, uh, from from different you know sector uh, the industries and businesses, so is stakeholder engagement. Um, that's what we are uh, doing in Afghanistan. We have been um, uh, um, having um, uh, like regular meetings with the uh, mobile operators, uh, with the internet service providers, in the uh, the enterprises that provide. Uh, IT services as well as IT enabled services in Afghanistan. Um, the purpose for this is in order for us to understand where the, uh, where the industry is heading, uh, what are the new technologies that are utilizing and what are the innovations they're working on so that we can prepare ourselves as a regulator uh, for the future. And also understanding the challenges, potential challenges in the future um, that these disruptive technologies, the ITES and other uh, industries might bring, and how we can ensure that the Afghan um, network is, uh, is ready for the future tech. Um, we also uh, doing risk assessments in, uh, in, in, in continuous evaluation of what's going on um, in the market, um, as well as we're interested in uh, in working with other uh, countries, other regulators to understand what their experiences are and how we can better, uh, uh, how we can learn from the experiences in the, the knowledge they, they have gained throughout. Um, uh, for your information, um, there are about 822 sites that ATRA, the Afghanistan Telecom Regulatory Authority, uh, funded throughout the country that in, uh, includes like 12% of the overall um, number of sites, uh, the, the, the total uh, network. Uh, we have supported over 100 uh, institutions, government institutions with fiber connectivity. There are over uh, 70 um, um, educational institutions that where we have laid fiber, supported laying fiber, so they have um, the fiber connectivity. We're planning to connect uh, over 100 uh, more villages across Afghanistan uh, to connect with the fiber uh, and also looking for other, um, uh, you know, ways that we can and means that we can connect the remotest areas in Afghanistan. Thank We're you. also working with, uh, with, uh, with other ministries. As I said earlier, we are taking a whole of the government approach. Uh, the, the fiber licenses are facing a tremendous challenge when they lay fiber across highways and district roads. You know, they face security issues or they face barriers in terms of, um, you know, some of the, uh, the local authorities would not allow them to lay fiber. So uh, right now we're, we're, we're working with the Ministry of, uh, of Public Works so that we could um, invest on the passive infrastructure to make it easier for the fiber. Uh, that includes ducts in, uh, in, in pipes across the highways, especially the new ones and then uh, the old highways that we're building. In addition, we have, yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, re-strategized our TDF. Um, we're investing on five big programs. Um, the one is telemedicine. Uh, second one is digital media. Um, third one is education. Um, fourth is uh, EIDs, uh, uh, identities. That doesn't in, uh, only include the national ID, but many other IDs that would be utilized electronically. Uh, and then innovation and industries uh, development uh, program, which includes entrepreneurship. 
because uh, we want to help uh, young people understand what, what, what the new technologies is, are and how they can you know, set up their companies properly and make them sustainable in, uh, in the current you know, digital uh, revolution. Also, uh, as, as a regulator, we have a responsibility to, uh, to provide spectrum resources uh, to, to uh, many companies who would uh, require them. Uh, but it's, it's a little tricky, as I said, uh, the speed is tremendous uh, uh, of the technology uh, development, but we have to keep up the pace um, the WRC recommendations for 5G, uh, you know, um, uh, in, in other, so updating our national uh, frequency allocation table, which is a little very old, um, uh, we have to, uh, you know, adopt that and, and adjust ourselves uh, with the recommendations coming from the ITU. Very with that, good. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much. I think this was very good, uh, uh, very detailed uh, uh, tour de raison of all the uh, excellent uh, initiatives that uh, you're leading and uh, very much appreciate this. I think you, you, you highlighted some uh, important elements around the importance of a whole of government approach, the importance of uh, stakeholder consultation and the examples you've given around uh, spectrum uh, around the issues uh, about uh, uh, fiber. I mean, very, very good uh, examples. And I'm sure uh, there will be a lot of discussion around uh, the points you raised and the experience. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we have to move to the next speaker. Uh, so um, let me invite uh, Mr. Uh, Mario um, Fromo. Um, uh, in a digital uh, driven environment, uh, digital technologies are bringing a, a host of potential innovation to increase consumer welfare. Uh, but also require greater attention regarding protecting consumer data. Uh, so what are the new regulatory aspects and tools to consider when making regulatory decisions? And I'll ask you to be brief, sorry. Over to you, Mario. Okay, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to all. First, I would like to thank the ITU and the World Bank especially to my friend Dorin Bogdan Martin and to you, Botenia Guermasi, for the invitation to participate in this very important event. Excellencies, distinguished guests and friends, it is my deep honor to be with you in this session and to share briefly what the Federal Telecommunication Institute, the IFT, the Telecommunication and Broadcasting Regulator of Mexico, and also the competition authority in these sectors is considering when making regulatory decision on disruptive technologies. The IFT was considered a fourth generation regulator by UITU in the ICT regulatory tracker last year. In the last year, Digital technology has become an import part, important part of the agenda of different governments since, thanks to them, it, it has been possible to face the great challenge that the COVID-19 pandemic generated. Digital technology are a driving force for the development and digital transformation of societies promoting and improving the well-being of consumers by reducing production, transaction, and distribution costs, and also as by improving, for example, government health, education, and financial services. In order to improve the use of technological advance that are developed every day, it is essential to establish regulatory mechanisms to promote a better ad adopt adoption for the digital transformation. In this sense, the IFT defined new lines of regulatory action for the medium term, which were established in a document we call Roadmap 2021-2025. In this way, we identify the most relevant regulatory topic, topics which were organized in five pillars re related to infrastructure, promote economic competition, development of digital ecosystem, and adoption of new technology. 
rights of user and audience and institutional in innovation. Some of the regulatory topics incorporated are emerging technologies such as 5G, internal, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, machine learning, big data, blockchain, among other issues such as OTT application, user empowerment, intersectoral cooperation, and net neutrality issues. However, it is important to recognize that these topics are not an exclusive tax for the telecom regulator, but they involve a wide range of actors and stakeholders. Therefore, collaborative regulation will allow the use of new regulatory tools through particip participation of all stakeholders in decision making. We are working to become a fifth gener generation regulator, a collaborative regulator, as defined by ITU in the ICT regulatory tracker. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing this and thank you for the vision also of becoming uh, you know, a fifth generation regulator with the collaborative approach. Uh, this is really insightful. Thank you so much. So I'd like to bring the voice of the private sector now. Uh, and we heard from many speakers earlier the importance of this dialogue between the regulators and the industry. Uh, so we're very happy today to have with us uh, Jennifer. Uh, um, and the question to you, Jennifer, is how can cross-border collaboration on regulatory aspects support digital transformation across diff different sectors? Uh, over to you, Jennifer. And first off, thank you so much for inviting me today. I'm honored to be here today with such esteemed panelists. Um, so first, I just want to touch on collaboration because really, um, it wasn't a term that I was that familiar with and the idea of regulatory collaboration. And the more I think about it, the more I like it. You know, I like it both from a, a collaborative effort between countries and governments, but also between the private sector and governments. And I think on cross-border, it's particularly important, especially with our reliance, a growing reliance on standards. Um, uh, you know, private industry, including my company, spend a fair amount of time now in the standards bodies, especially as we're looking at developing 5G, 6G, beyond. Um, and understanding, um, and for governments, as they're looking at um, the sorts of requirements they have, and what's been really interesting, the standards bodies have typically been private sector, but today we have governments who also participate, so that that's a new form of collaboration. Of course, the standard bodies are voluntary standards, but I think understanding the standards as regulators and, and allowing operators to use the standards that they think are, are the most appropriate is really, really important as we're deploying these networks. It's in everyone's interest to have standard-based um, services. One, you know, we have greater interconnection among technologies and especially with, as you're going to see more and more networks that are networks of networks, not just a mobile network, not just a satellite network, not just a fiber network, everyone's going to be combined. So having the understanding of standards and spectrum harmonization, I would say, continues to be critically important when we go to the ITU, when we go to the WARC, where we work on regional bodies, whether it's CTEL, which I participate in, APT, you know, name your um, CEPT. So, so I think for both from cross-border, those remain incredibly important, both spectrum harmonization and standards, but I also think best practices among industries. Oh, so many of our companies today are multinational and we use, you know, we implement standards um, or best practices across the globe. Um, so this is something the satellite industry has been very good. For instance, we have a global approach on best practices for cyber. You know, I, I still don't think where, where industry has stepped up, perhaps regulators don't have to regulate quite as hard um, or, or maybe come up with something new. But I think having that collaboration where, regu where in regulated industries step forward and say we're going to um, start um, taking action and so forth will... Um, you know, using this as opposed to regulation is important. So I see my time is up. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, indeed, collaboration is uh, a golden word. It's collaboration between regulators, collaboration between uh, 
the industry and regulators and it's it's amazing how how much we can go faster by talking more and uh, collaborating more and thanks also for highlighting the issues around the network of networks and standards so uh, very good thank you so much so we'll uh, we're reaching now uh, the last part of this uh, panel uh, and hopefully we have uh, a discussion um, uh, so uh, please continue to post your questions uh, on the chat box and um, we'll kickstart the discussion by inviting uh, two authors from the regulatory uh, handbook uh, to uh, share with us uh, their views. Uh, we're happy to have with us today Giraldo Neto and Ian Walden. Uh, Giraldo is the technical and policy director of Tele Telecommunication uh, Management Group, a consulting firm specialized in ICT regulation, and he wrote Chapter 6 on Spectrum Management. And Ian is a professor of information and communication law at Queen Mary University of London, and he wrote the Chapter uh, 5 on Data Protection and Trust. So we'll start with you, um, uh, Giraldo. It is very difficult to imagine any discussion around regulation without Spectrum uh, being front uh, and center to the discussion. Uh, as different wireless technologies become key to provide access to the internet, in your view, what are the key applications driving the future use of Spectrum? How the combination of these technology can support the expansion of connectivity, bridging the digital divide by connecting those that currently do not have access to the internet? Thank you. Thank you, Bettina, and good day and evening to all. Yes, as you mentioned, uh, Spectrum is an asset very important when you're talking about connectivity and especially one of the teams of the event that is connected, the unconnected. So in terms of uh, technologies, when you see the current discussions and what you see for the future, they are basically what I would divide in center on the applications. And for that, uh, we see, for example, new discussions around the Wi-Fi technology, new Spectrum being needed to support new applications, indoor applications, replacing wires within a home or an indoor environment. Uh, it has been mentioned, uh, we, we talk about a lot about 5G and all the spectrum required for in the different bands for 5G, but uh, this is uh, related to the different applications those networks can provide uh, from the IoT environment for a lower uh, Low spectrum, where you can see, for example, applications in the agriculture sector, or we are talking a lot also about uh, connected cars. So each of these applications uh, require a different uh, uh, type of bands and a different approach on how we license those spectrums uh, to the to the new players. We are talking a lot about uh, uh, private networks, for example, something that we might not have uh, in a recent past, uh, but also. Uh, in terms of technology, we need to look at uh, how to expand coverage and expand connectivity. So in this sense, uh, we have seen developments, uh, well, we have seen the panelists mention, like Janet mentioned, uh, about the, the role of the satellite uh, and how much uh, satellite has been providing broadband in areas that the terrestrial networks cannot uh, reach. And, and we've seen new technology, these uh, new constellations of satellites, that now we have thousands of satellites uh, to cover uh, different areas. And also related to, to the coverage point, uh, we see uh, the, the high altitude platforms, these platforms on, on the stratosphere that tries to combine uh, a little bit of the advantage of the terrestrial network, but also the, the, the greater coverage of, uh, of the satellite. So we see in, in here, I wanted to highlight some of the, the comments of the panelists. I mean, we do see a need for balance uh, in terms of the approach we have in, in spectrum management. It, it is an engagement of the different technologies and the different actors, stakeholders on this. Uh, but the, the flexibility is to support innovation, but also to protect uh, the existing application. So in this sense, uh, I, I think from, from the private sector and from the industry, we see uh, a lot of different technologies and, but certainly these developments bring uh, a lot of challenges from a regulator standpoint make sure the, the different views are taken into consideration. But, uh, but just to the point of mercy in the beginning, uh, there always have been regulatory ch uh, challenges from the regulator perspective, but I think the main one that is connected, the unconnected, it still remains. And, uh, and I think now we have new tools to, to address this point. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Geraldo. Thank you. Let's go now to in, you know, when we talk about digital economy, it's data economy. Uh, and uh, we've heard throughout the discussion from the first panel to the discussion we just heard now the issues around data is, is very important. So can you take us into the main uh, issues you covered in your chapter and how can data protection issues relate to the issues around trust, around cybersecurity, around consumer protection? Over to you, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, in my chapter, I looked at uh, the nature of, of data protection regimes because we, we talk about it as if it's a, a singular body of law, but it is often a whole collection of both laws and regulations, uh, guidance and standards, uh, which govern the way in which organizations, whether they be public sector or private sector, collect and process personal data. And I think the concern that's become manifest is the need for us as individuals to be able to exercise meaningful, meaningful control over the use of our personal data in an online environment. And by being able to exercise meaningful control, we thereby engender trust uh, in using online for our social and our economic and our political activities. Uh, so I looked also at the critical role of the regulatory authority because uh, any regulatory regime is not just dependent on a set of rules or statutes, but it's also dependent on the, the behaviour of the regulator acting often as a surrogate for, for individual data subjects, protecting data subjects. Um, I considered some of the trade implications because clearly um, there are potential barriers to data flows arising from data protection legislation, and it's a highly controversial issue at the moment, not least between the, the European Union and the United States over what are appropriate, adequate or equivalent rules. And finally, obviously, data security, consumer protection and data protection are overlapping topics uh, and it's really important to bear in mind that that data protection is not achievable without adequate cyber security uh, consumers cannot be protected unless they can ensure that their personal data is not abused uh, and used against them and therefore it's again this matter of trying to see the synergies between what have historically been seen as discrete areas of regulation. Unless we see them as a, as a, uh, from a holistic perspective, then regulators will uh, miss out on some important issues and our regulators uh, will not be subject to, to strong enough regulation. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think we're uh, reaching the end of, uh, of the panel today. Uh, thank you for, uh, including uh, a lot of questions. Uh, I think the topics that uh, were highlighted are, are important. The, the issue around collaboration, the issue around working together, uh, collaborative uh, regulation is very important. And it's definitely you know, uh, a time in history where the definitions, the, the tools, the levers, uh, you know, need to be updated to keep up with the technology and with the promises that technology uh, could offer for uh, development. Uh, for those who have not yet uh, seen the, the toolkit and the material, I think uh, we provided a, a good overview today of uh, uh, a lot of depth uh, into uh, those elements, and I wish all of you will have a chance to look at it in details. So, Doreen, over to you to close uh, the event. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Butena, and what a what a great discussion. I wish we I wish we could continue. So many important contributions from our amazing panelists, our brilliant authors, and and great inputs made by you, our participants, in the chat. Um, of course, Mercy, I too remember as Butena does, 20 years ago when we launched uh, for the first time, and I, I think overall we're very pleased that this work remains valuable to so many of you. And I'm happy that, that, that you were able to note that this afternoon. Um, we will continue deepening our analysis. This is a living platform. And so many of the points that came up this afternoon, the things that you have raised in the chat, the discussion will continue online. We do have new, uh, new components that are under development on child online protection, cybersecurity coming soon. 
Uh, and I think, Butena, one of the big take takeaways uh, for me would be this focus, of course, on, on collaboration. And while we look to the future, we look to recovery, things seem very uncertain, uh, even in this new year of 2021. And I think all eyes are on policymakers and regulators to really help show the way out of the crisis and lead economies and societies towards recovery. Um, I think that point that you mentioned, Butena, about togetherness, we need the governments, private sector, international organizations, all of us together. And we really do need to redouble our efforts to speed up recovery and digital transformation. Uh, we heard from many of you the importance of shared leadership, of commitment, uh, so that we can together uh, tackle the challenges around digital connectivity for all. Uh, we heard also from many the importance of flexibility, agility, that's really what I see as the new normal for digital regulation. Uh, we need to push our regulators to get a bit off script and to, to, and to design new regulatory patterns and apply new tools, uh, while at the same time, of course, those regulatory basics still apply. Um, and of course, thinking about the new skills that are needed and the new thinking and Mercy coming back to your point about the learning, learning and relearning, that's so important. Uh, these new regulatory models need to be grounded in market realities and make sense for both industry and consumers uh, because we want to get to that multiplier effect with digital markets and economies as a whole. Uh, we need, of course, and we heard from many, we have to avoid that regulatory fragmentation. We can't afford to be, to be set back and we need to build common ground around these high level regulatory principles to ignite these digital markets. And again, innovation is key. And of course, collaboration, collaboration. Uh, and with that, I really want to thank you all. And I want to, if I can, do a little promotion for tomorrow's Road to Addis event. Join us. It's on partnerships. Uh, and join us in the WTBC process. Uh, and of course, today's event is an example of a longstanding partnership, one that we've had with the World Bank uh, for many years. And I'm really, it's a privilege to have uh, such a great colleague, Butena, leading the work at the bank. And really, we, we are so delighted that we were able to, to do this with you. And I want to thank you and your amazing team, and also to thank the, the ITU team. And with that, Butena, I hand back over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, hope to see you soon. And the discussion definitely will continue. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone.